Greetings to all of you over there from Positive PG Medical and Training Center and the entire OHC team. This is basically a discussion based on AIMS May 2014 and the OHC 5 program which was conducted in Chennai which, is, which was a crash course basically fra framed for AIMS and PGA May 2014. When we went into this AIMS questions and the program materials, it was promises delivered. The number of questions which we assured which could be answered from OHC5 program in May AIMS 2014 was somewhere around 120 questions and retrospectively when we compared the questions and the program materials, it was approximately 120 questions were answered from various programs at OHC5. So now I will just narrate the, all the programs which was in OHC5 and the split up of questions which were covered in each of the program in AIMS May 2014 exam. The first program here, first material was Operation Air Capsule book. This was a book which had four parts, which had one part which has exclusively the new points of the 18th edition of Harrison was one point. The second was an XPM extract, the third was physiology extract and fourth was uh, overall important points from various subjects were accumulated and given. This was the four parts of OHC book and that book covered approximately 30 questions from AIMS May 2014. The second was regarding Operation Harry book. Few words regarding this book. This book is being updated into the second edition which will be coming shortly. It is completely updated. It is coming out in two volumes with appropriate pictures to make everything very clear and we hope this book will leave a telling effect in the AIMS November 2014 exam. This, question, this book answered approximately 60 questions plus. Posse goal is an accumulation of the last five years AIMS. This had approximately 20 questions. Must know tables, it was heartening. It was an accumulation of salient tables from various subjects. Approximately 300 tables were there which was made into the handout and discovered approximately 15 questions. And then we had we analyzed the OSC class discussion and the, and the AIMS exam paper, the approximately 58 questions were discussed in the, inside the program. Then we had the SPM program, OFTAL program, forensic medicine and the various other programs contributed approximately 25 questions. Overlaps will be there, so the total number of questions which were discussed at the various programs was approximately 120 questions. And suppose the AIMS paper was compared with the entire positive med PG regular course, then it was approximately 145 to 150 questions. Now it is my it is our turn to show the evidences to make it more authentic. So in each questions, I'll give you the question, the discussion, and the along with the exact the page number and from which material it has been taken to make the discussion more authentic. Now we will start from one by one. The first, I was, it is not subject based discussion, it is based on the materials and the exam questions. So the first evidence which we provide is Operation Harry book based. Now we will go into the evidence number one, Operation Harry book. So we will discuss the questions based on this book first. A woman had a flaccid bullet with oral lesions. The probable finding in direct immunofluorescence will be. It's a positive. It's a repeat one, which was asked way back in 2009. The, the answer here becomes IgG deposits of keratinocytes leading to fishnet appearance. The second one, linear IgG deposit in the dermoepidermal junction occurs in bullous femphigoid. The church or granular IgA deposits in the dermal epidermal junction occurs in the disease dermatitis herpetiformis. The fourth choice linear IgA deposits in the dermal epidermal junction occurs in linear bullous dermatosis or childhood IgA disease which is asked in all India 2012. 
the next question which comes into discussion now we go into the next evidence operation had a capsule book the first question which was from here was a middle-aged woman with increased liver enzymes ANA positive and jaundice was given immunosuppression in the form of azathioprine and she improved what is the provisional diagnosis it is a good question choices were autoimmune hepatitis primary bilirubin cirrhosis coming to the autoimmune hepatitis the first point seals the answer it is also called as lupoid hepatitis because ANA is positive occurs in middle aged women presents with unexplained jaundice there is hypergammaglobulinemia it is associated with hla dr3 dr4 like your diabetes mellitus it predominantly presents in women with elevated otpt and auto antibodies the three auto antibodies which are positive here is ana liver kidney mycosomal antibody and smooth muscle antibody the one question which has been uh, the treatment will be good for your immunosuppression in the form of azathioprine or steroids the more facts here one question which has been asked in the exam is regarding lkm antibody lkm antibody are three types lkm1 occurs in hepatitis c and autoimmune hepatitis lkm2 occurs in drug induced hepatitis lkm3 occurs in hepatitis d this was asked in aims november 2010 we'll just briefly see the regarding the scores for liver transplant which has been asked in the exams there are three scores one is called as child book score mel score and pell score the current score which is utilized is mel score so you should know regarding that there are three parameters which comes under mel score one is bilirubin one is creatinine one is prothrombin time pell score is for children regarding isolation period which is correct chicken pox 6 days after rash measles 3 days after rash german measles 7 days after rash varicella zoster 6 days among all these choices the one disease which does not need isolation is german measles we'll see regarding the other choices chicken pox it is until all lesions are crusted which is around 6 days after the onset of rash measles it is contagious even before the onset of the rash so isolation starts from the onset of the catarrhal stage throughout the third day of the disease rash coming to the next disease which was there it is a herpes zoster 6 days after the onset of the rash pertussis it is 4 weeks or until paroxysmal cease for hepatitis a it is 3 weeks so the answer here is this a child had defective mineralization serum calcium is decreased increased phosphate is present increased actin phosphate is present with decreased urinary calcium and phosphate what is the provisional diagnosis one of the tough questions in this paper nutritional rickets renal tubular acidosis renal glomerular rickets and celiac rickets it is either decreased urine calcium or with increased urine phosphate nutritional rickets is ruled out because it will not have increased serum phosphate that means serum calcium decreased phosphate is also decreased there it is not nutritional rickets renal tubular acidosis is associated with your increased urinary calcium so it is also not urine renal tubular acidosis we are left with renal glomerular rickets or celiac rickets coming to this the only condition among this four coming to renal glomerular rickets it is occurs in any ckd among this four conditions it is the only condition which is associated with your increased phosphate level in the serum but urine phosphate might also be increased here but if you put everything together the answer fits into renal glomerular rickets the next question in physiology tissue most susceptible to ischemia neurons heart liver and nephrons some points regarding neurons regarding o2 consumption brain consumes 20 percentage of the total body resting o2 consumption the brain is extremely sensitive to hypoxia it can produce unconsciousness if blood supply is cut off to a short span of even 10 seconds some points regarding o2 consumption o2 consumption in the entire body is 250 ml per minute the predominant one which consumes will be your liver and your skeletal muscle here coming to the organ which consumes maximum if it is ml per 100 g per minute the answer is carotid bodies 
Next question is supramaximal stimuli can cause action potential during which phase? Relative refractive period, absolute refractive period, latent period, and subnormal period. Here, absolute refractive period is one period in which any amount of stimuli given will not produce a response. So, the answer here should be relative refractive period. The next question, some points regarding neurons. The neurons, the resting membrane potential is 70 millivolts, negative 70 millivolts. The saltatory conduction is jumping of the impulse from node to node in a myelinated one so that myelinated axons can conduct 50 times faster than your unmyelinated fibers. Erlanger and Gasser divided mammalian nerve fibers into three groups A, B and C groups. A group is further subdivided into alpha, beta, gamma and delta and you will be very clear regarding the susceptibility of various neurons regarding the hypoxia, pressure and local anesthetic. Next question, one of the good tough ones and it was very hard to know that it was given in our handouts. Regarding the next question, after walking receptors will be activated by one of the reasonably tough question in the paper. Choices were throughout the range of movement, only small units are activated, recruits fast adapting receptors towards the end. It is absolute hardcore theory. We will go to the discussion. Muscle physiology, there are three types of muscle fibers, namely slow, fast and resistant fatigue called as FR and fast and fatigable called as EFF. Slow fibers have a low innovation ratio, fast FF fibers have a high innovation ratio. Coming to the walking movement, we will directly go into the walking movement. During standing, small slow units are first recruited. Once the patient starts to walk, the recruitment of fast FR units increases. As walking becomes running or jumping, the FF units are recruited. So the answer becomes your recruits fast adapting receptors towards the end. Some more po entrance oriented points regarding walking, which I am anticipating in the next examination. Walking pneumonia. Walking pneumonia is caused by M. pneumoniae. It's also it's an eaten agent pneumonia. It's a primary atypical pneumonia. It is also called as walking pneumonia. The next question is well thought question, well made question. Binding of 2,3 dBG to dash site of O2 will dash affinity to O2. Choices were one and decrease, four and increase, one and increase, four and de decrease. Some point regarding, regarding 2,3 dBG, it's a substance which is present in the blood which will lead to increased delivery to of oxygen in the tissues so that it helps, it helps to unload your oxygen in from your hemoglobin. So some points regarding this, your 2,3 dBG, it is decreased in acidosis, thyroid hormone, growth hormones, exercise, chronic hypoxia and androgens can increase your 2,3 dBG. 2,3 dBG has poor binding with your fetal hemoglobin. Where does it go and attach to your hemoglobin? It binds to deoxyhemoglobin beta chain, one molecule per tetramer of hemoglobin and it decreases affinity of hemoglobin. So the answer becomes one and your decreased affinity. So next question is regarding stagnant hypoxia is due to decrease of O2 carrying capacity, blood flow decrease to the muscle, amount of dissolved O2 and inspired air O2. Regarding these four choices, hypoxia, few points I want to stress here regarding stagnant, it is also called as ischemic hypoxia. It occurs when the blood flow to tissue is so low that adequate O2 is not delivered in spite of normal O2 and hemoglobin concentration. The one more point which I want to stress regarding entrance exam and hypoxia is the type of hypoxia which occurs in carbon monoxide poisoning is not histotoxic but it is anemic hypoxia. The answer here is blood flow decrease to your muscle. The next choice is regarding equilibrium potent pressure is maintained in blood vessel in absence of flow is due to mean arterial pressure, 
pulse pressure, critical closing volume pressure and perfusion pressure. The choices, the answer here becomes your critical closing pressure. What is that? In inactive tissues, for example, the pressure in many capillaries is slow, so low because the pre-capillary sphincters are constricted and many capillaries are collapsed. The pressure at which flow ceases is called the critical closing pressure. The next question in SPM, in school, who does the ophthalmic screening? It is a repeat one, teacher, NGOs, optometrist and ophthalmologist. Answer here is teacher. School health service, some point, periodic medical examination is warranted at the time of entry and every fourth year. Medical examination should be given to teachers. The school health committee was formed in 1961 that had some stipulations for an ideal school environment. The maximum strength per classroom is fixed at 40. Next question is, which is not included in the kangaroo mother care KMC? Skin contact, nutritional supplement, exclusive breastfeeding, early discharge and follow up. Here the answer becomes nutritional supplement. Kangaroo mother care was introduced by Dr. Hector. It has four components, skin to skin positioning, adequate nutrition, ambulatory care and early discharge. Next question regarding human developmental index does not include choices where maximum life expectancy fixed at 100 years, average income around 40,000, more important to universal education, unregistered population to be 0%. Here the maximum life expectancy fixed is not 100 years that is their answer. The other three choices are true. Chemoprophylaxis is not used for which of the following infection? Cholera, measles, meningococcal meningitis and conjunctivitis. Here the diseases in which chemoprophylaxis are indicated are cholera, conjunctivitis, diphtheria, influenza, malaria, meningitis and plague. So the answer here becomes measles. Something regarding your health advice to travelers. Vaccination certificate for yellow fever is the only certificate required for international travel. <coughs> Next question is, what is the neonatal mortality rate? 36, 50 and 70. The answer is 36 per thousand. Some points regarding neonatal mortality rate. It is the number of neonatal deaths per thousand live birth in that year. The commonest cause was birth preterm with birth complications 35%. Neonatal mortal rate is higher in boys. The MCH current level of achievement IMR is 53 infant mortal rate. The current MCH level of achievement national level infant mortal rate 53 per thousand. Neonatal mortal rate 36 per thousand. Underfree mortal rate 69 per thousand. Early neonatal mortal rate is 29 per thousand. So the answer becomes 36 per thousand. Pregnant women with TT coverage should be at least 80 percentage. Institutional deliveries are just 39 percentage. Next question is, infant mortal rate does not include stillbirth, early neonatal death, late neonatal death and post neonatal death. Here it does not include your stillbirth. Young patient present with central scotoma, on examination there was a subretinal yellowish exudate with dilated vessel in the retina, what is the provisional diagnosis? Coats disease, familial exudative detachment. Here the answer became Coats disease. It is also called as exudative retinitis or retinal telangiectasia. It is a rare non-hereditary condition occurring unilaterally in young males. It has dilated vessels with intraretinal and subretinal lipid accumulation leading to retinal detachment. Gustafson method is based on attrition, resorption, root transparency, symptom opposition. It is a repeat one somewhere in 2006 examination. Gustafson's method age estimation is over 21 years by changing in the dental tissue. The most reliable is your transparency of the root. Coming to the next question, in respiratory chain which is the last component O2, cytochrome A3, coenzyme Q, FADH2. 
if it is cytochrome A3 was the choice then that is the answer this is practically relevant because cytochrome A3 is the one which is acted upon by your cyanide cyanide some points that is bitter almond cell smell but 50% of persons cannot smell it I just want you to know the regarding the treatment of your cyanide and it acts on the last step in your mitochondrial electron transport chain cytochrome A3 the three drugs which are tried in your cyanide poisoning are sodium nitrite sodium thiosulfate and amyl nitrite coming to the next question regarding methadone all are true except it is used in chronic pain new receptor agonist oral availability is good so the choice the discussion regarding methadone it is commonly used for opiate withdrawal treatment it's it's a substitutes a longer active orally active pharmacologically equally drug for the abuse drug the ideal one is methadone is a mu receptor agonist the next one is a buprenorphine which is a partial mu agonist come some points regarding methadone methadone has a slow onset of action when taken orally it has a long elimination half life of approximately 24 to 36 hours and it has a cross tolerance so the answer here becomes this next question regarding analgesia anesthesia of, of supra maximal mac value will cause eeg shift from delta to theta alpha to beta beta to theta and beta to delta regarding your eeg we know there are four waves alpha beta delta and theta alpha wave occurs when your eyes are closed and mind is wandering beta wave occurs when you open your eyes delta wave occurs in deep sleep theta wave occurs in your meditation or children so mac definition we know it is your it is simply defined as a concentration of the vapor in the lungs that is needed to prevent movement or motor response in 50 percent of subjects in response to surgical pain stimuli it is your mac to this which muscle is not supplied by fifth nerve stylohyoid middle pterygoid lateral pterygoid tensor villa palatae it is a stylohyoid which is supplied by your seventh nerve because this goes into your derivative of your second arch mesoderm so it is supplied by your seventh nerve all the other three muscles are supplied by your fifth nerve which has a nerve which comes from the first arch which the nerve to the first arch is your mandibular nerve coming to the next question all are ectodermal derivative in origin except hair follicle erecta pile sebaceous gland and mammary gland here hair follicle sebaceous gland and mammary gland are ectodermal in origin memory gland can have two origins from the ectoderm and mesoderm so here erector pile is a muscle which comes from the mesoderm so the answer here becomes erector pile the discussion was given here so we two more points i want to stress tympanic membrane is one organ which can come from all three ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm exocrine the glands sweat gland sebaceous parotid mammary and lacrimal all comes from your ectoderm the next question is regarding not a mesodermal derivative cardiac muscle skeletal muscle smooth muscle and pupillary muscle cardiac skeletal smooth all comes from mesoderm pupillary muscle are from your neural ectoderm the next question is which causes shift of oxygen dissociation curve to the left that is which unloads your oxygen left is your loading which will not release your oxygen that is your decrease in your temperature what can release your oxygen is your shift to the right so any increase in 2 dvg all will cause your shift to the right so here the answer becomes your decrease in temperature now we'll go into the next evidence mkt this is an accumulation of standard tables from standard textbooks which is approximately around 300 tables it is heartening to know that around 14 to 15 questions came from this handout from OHC first question was verruque bodies are seen in schwannoma meningioma and glioma it is a straightforward question no twist in it 
So, schwannoma is one thing which might have your verruque bodies. Microscopically, there are compact areas called as antennae A and myxomatous area called as antennae B and a palisading tumor cells called as verruque bodies. In the immunohistochemistry, which is specific for your schwannoma is S100 protein. It is invariably benign. Common location is your cerebrospondyl angle. It is your neurilemoma. Next question was, a HIV patient with CD4 count less than 100, what is the cause of the organ showing intraceroplasmic inclusions with perinuclear halo? What they were targeting is your cytomegalovirus, MAIC or PCP. Answer here is, when the CD4 count comes below 100, there are two organisms should be covered with prophylaxis. One is your cytomegalovirus, one is your MAIC. Yet cytomegalovirus retinitis prophylaxis is required once the count drops below 50 but cytomegalovirus prophylaxis can be started once it starts to come below 50 to or 100. So the answer here becomes your CMB. One more thing which has been changed regarding the CD4 count and therapy in your HIV is the CD4 count below which you will start your ART therapy. It was 350 now it has been increased to 500. Next was your a 4 year old child with frothy urine, oliguric, proteinuria, serum creatinine is 0.5, albumin is 2.5, no RBC cast. What is the diagnosis? This is quite straightforward. It is your minimal chain disease. 40 year old man presents with delay in mental function. His son had a similar complaint. Mother and daughter are normal. A picture was given which was like adenoma sebaceum, which is true. Autosomal dominant. NF1, NF2 and 0 double pigmentosa. If the given picture was like adenoma sebaceum, then it will be tuberous sclerosis, then it becomes autosomal dominant. NF1 and NF2 is your neurofibromatosis. Some points which is entrance oriented from your tuberous sclerosis, one they might ask regarding renal lesion. The renal lesion is your renal angiomyolipoma. The cardiac lesion is your rhabdomyoma. One good thing is 80 percentage spontaneous remission. Three and a half year old boy with erythematous rash, strawberry tongue, mucocutaneous lymphadenopathy, six years, six days fever. What is the possible diagnosis? Scarlet fever, Kawasaki, Kimuras, Rosai, Dorfman syndrome. The answer here was straightforward. It is your Kawasaki disease. What made interesting was the choices: Kimura disease and Rosai, Dorfman syndrome. Rosai Dorman syndrome has been already asked in the examination before in 2011 examination. It's a close differential diagnosis for lymphomas. This presents in young males with fever with multiple lymphopathy. But fortunately, if biopsy comes as Rosai Dorman syndrome, it's a good prognosis. The complication which is dangerous in Kawasaki is cerebral aneurysm. Kawasaki can be managed by your IV immunoglobulin which can abort your so called coronary aneurysm. Two months after renal transplant, what is the most common viral disease? Polyoma, CMV, HHV6, herpes simplex. It is a very practical question. Your renal transplant is patients are more prone for infections because of the immunosuppression which can be classified which can be clubbed into 0 to 1 month, 1 month to 6 months and beyond 6 months. 0 to 1 month it is like any other hospital acquired infections. It is either UTI or pneumonia. 1 to 6 months it is peculiar infections. Predominantly in virus it is CMB. The commonest virus which causes post transplant infection is CMB. They present with fever, leukopenia and GI ulcers right from the oral cavity till your anal cavity it can be your ulcers anywhere. The drug, drug of choice is your Gansiclover. In an albinism child what is the system to be examined? CNS, CVS, I it is of cal. Albinism can be ocular cutaneous albinism or generalized albinism. So it is your ocular cutaneous or ocular. So the system to be involved is your eyes. Next question, measuring blood pressure which is correct? Cuff length 80 percentage of mean arterial pressure, sitting position BP is kept above your level of heart, sleeping BP is higher. Plus, we are heartening to know that it was aptly discussed in the program. We gave a brain teaser also 80 percentage and 40 percentage. 
actually cuff length is 80 percentage and the width is 40 percentage of your midarm circumference so so the answer here becomes your cuff length is 80 percentage of your midarm circumference sitting position bp is kept at the level of the heart sleeping blood pressure is lower than the normal blood pressure the answer here becomes a which is not a cause of acute pancreatitis hyperlipidemia abdominal trauma islets or hyplasia and mutation in the cationic gene here the answer is your islets or hyplasia hyperlipidemia abdominal trauma is all associated drugs which are predominantly steroids azathioprine and dinosin can be associated two common cause of pancreatitis are alcoholism and gallstone coming to the genetic analysis genetic stuff mutation in the cationic gene trypsinogen will cause hereditary pancreatitis one infection which can cause pancreatitis is mumps next question an autopsy of a child with rds will show involvement of which cell type 1 pneumocytes type 2 pneumocytes clara cell and heart failure cells the answer is straightforward it is a type 2 pneumocyte which secretes your surfactant coming to the next one olympian bro and ragates is seen in congenital syphilis ectodermal dysplasia and rubella in the ohc session we discussed regarding ragates we didn't discuss regarding olympian bro but ragates snuffles are typical findings of your congenital syphilis congenital syphilis is the only stage of syphilis which can be associated with the bullous lesion no other stage of syphilis will have a bullous lesion now we'll go to the next part of the evidence posse gold posse gold is an accumulation of the previous years papers and answers only the first question was regarding asha will not get remuneration for it was asked in aims may 2013 measurement of birth weight institutional delivery registration of birth and weight birth and death zero dose opb and first dose of bcg some points regarding asha asha is a voluntary health worker which is show uh, the incidence i mean the ratio of asha is approximately one per thousand candidate thousand individuals asha gets remuneration for institutional delivery in rural area it is little higher than your urban area some more points regarding asha the year 2006 7 was declared as the year for institutional deliveries this is when asha was promoted in a big way the roles and responsibilities of asha were given below she creates an awareness councils works with village health nurse she is not a replacement she is a she will work along with them inform about birth and death unusual problems promote construction of household toilet all her roles and responsibilities of asha one more question which is asked in the exams regarding asha is the impact indicators the impact indicators are imr child malnutrition rate and number of cases of tuberculosis or leprosy detected as compared to previous year this is your impact indicators process indicators are the number of asha strain ashas are trained by your anms and your health worker so the answer for this question is this next question is after a disaster which is not a cause of epidemic rickets a ari leishmaniasis it was asked in your aims november 2013 answer became your leishmania the next question is which is the most sensitive test for iodine deficiency in a community this is also repeated in the aims may 2013 neonatal hypothyroidism low urinary iodine level t3 level and t4 level answer here was neonatal hypothyroidism the next question asked was lipogranulomatous inflammation is seen in helazion tuberculosis sebaceous cyst this was repeated twice once in aims may 2008 one in may 2013 answer is your helazion one thing is recurring helazion in the same area may sometimes be a symptom of your sebaceous cell carcinoma next question was a man was diagnosed with diabetes on his 45th day birthday when should he visit an ophthalmologist on the 50th birthday when dimness of vision starts before the 50th birthday immediately regarding your diabetes 
on his 45th day birthday it is predominantly type 2 diabetes mellitus type 2 diabetes mellitus it might have been present there long before it is diagnosed so retinal evaluation in type 2 dm should be done immediately in type 1 diabetes mellitus retinopathy occurs only after a span of 4 to 5 years so you may not evaluate early you can start evaluation after 4 to 5 years of diagnosis in glaucomatous optic atrophy which cell is affected first amaurotic rods and cones cones bipolar cells ganglion cells it's a repeat one the answer is this lithium is stopped how many days before an elective surgery it was asked in aims now may 2013 answer choices were 1 2 3 4 days and the answer was this pinhead size lesions on hand and penis is present in a patient the probable diagnosis scabies lichen planus lichenitidis molluscum contagiosum the answer is lichenitidis it was repeated in aims may 2013 next question is medulla is not supplied by superior cerebral artery pica anterior spinal and posterior spinal it was repeated in November aims 2013 answer is superior cerebral artery which part of cochlear implant is implanted during surgical implantation receiver stimuli coil speech processor and microphone it was also repeated in aims November 2013 the answer becomes your transmitter with the coil the next question was which increases a trabecular outflow lenodoprost brimodin Pilocarpin Timolol. It is a modified repeat from AIMS November 2013. Some points regarding Brimonidin. Brimonidin increases your aqueous outflow and decreases aqueous production leading to a drop of IOP. It is an alpha agonist. Carbonic anidase inhibitor is your brinosolamide. This decreases your aqueous production. Myotics predominantly acts by direct stimulation of your myoscronic receptors and constitute pupillary muscle. Coming, this is the Coming to your ocular beta blockers, Timolol, Timolol predominantly acts by decreasing your aqueous production. So some points regarding lenodoprost, it's a possible analog, it increases the outflow of aqueous fluid from the eyes through your uveal scleral tract. Some more points which might be asked in the examinations regarding your glaucoma, one is called as red cell glaucoma, it is a Glaucoma which follows after trauma it is called as red cell glaucoma. So the answer for this is this. Next question, this OHC4 had a handout from forensic medicine. Burnt rope odor is seen in cannabis, chloral hydrate and strychnine. The answer here is cannabis. Cannabis has burnt rope odor. One more point which was very fascinating to know that it was given in our MKT was this. The question was regarding which is not a component of cannabis. Choices were ganja, charas, bung and affine. Ganja, charas and bung are components of cannabis. Affine is not there. It was methodically given in the MKT table. Next question was active metabolite of white oleander is seen in abrin, mirin and pilocarpin it is your nirin two more questions were asked regarding IPC which were repeated one was regarding perjury the answer was 191 the next was asked regarding your intoxication which IPC is associated with intoxication choices were 82, 83, 84 and 85 82 and 83 are regarding the age of the child regarding your punishment below 7 it is not punishable this was your 82 and 83 84 is associated with your McNaughton's rule so the answer here must be your 85 so far we have seen a discussion of AIMS May 2014 in relevance to the OHC 5 program at its juncture there are a few acknowledgements and congratulations. At the onset, the entire OHC5 team and positive team congratulates all the toppers in AIMS May 2014. Acknowledgements on the day of the exam, we had a discussion after the exam. 
this entire questions were possible because of these doctors who came for the discussion and the discussion went on as late as 11.30 p.m. So I just want to acknowledge all those who made it possible. Dr. Raj Rahman, Dr. B. Srinath, Dr. M. Srinivas, Dr. Vimaladithan, Dr. Ambuja Shekhar, Dr. Priya, Dr. Santosh Kumar from Madurai, all others from Chennai and Dr. Venkat Raj. All these doctors who made it possible. Thanks a lot. And now we have seen the evidence from OLC 5. I have given it in black and white, the evidence with page number, approximately 120 questions from AIMS May 2014 has been discussed at various programs at OLC 5. This to translate into ranks should be utilized completely by the candidates. This is what we try to do in those 12 days inside OHC 5 to make you utilize the OHC 5 materials completely. So this time we have tried to some make some more amendments and some more improvements. First regarding Operation Harry book, few points, it is completely updated, it is made into two volumes, it has been supplemented with apt and appropriate pictures to make it everything worthwhile. What does it plan? It plans to cover 90 to 100 questions at least from AIMS November 2014. This will be available by late June. Operationary book two volumes plus OHC book one volume what we call it, call it as OHC combo will try to cover at least 120 questions from AIMS November 2014. So what is ideal to, to make it make the evidence to translate into ranks. If you come reasonably prepared with these OHC Operation Harry book two volumes plus OHC book one volume not completely oriented at least reasonably oriented to OHC 6 then the evidences will definitely translate into ranks. So thanks a lot for a patient audience. If what we request is done OHC 6 evidences will definitely translate into ranks. Thanks a lot again. We will meet at OHC 6. Thank you guys.